Yesterday, I got a text message from a dear friend of mine. You guys know him. You know him as Brad the drummer. Brad Cordova. He texted me. And we got a slide of him, I think. Do we have that slide, guys? Do we have it? There he is. Look at that. I don't know if you can zoom out and see what's behind him, but you can see right there. Brad texted me that photo. And the thing about Brad, you may not know this, he likes hiking. Brad loves to hike. On his 40th birthday, can I say that, Brad? Okay. On his 40th birthday, he hiked 40 miles. Woo, I'm turning 66 next year, and I'm not doing that, Brad. Okay, you had to call 911 or something. But Brad, he took that picture, and he, and he sent it to me. And, and I texted him, and I said, Brad, are you in Bakersfield or Ireland? And, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You know, and, and I looked at that, and I thought, you know what? That's what the rain's all about. You know, God blesses us. And then we have reservoir of water. Our farmers get water. We can turn water in our house and not worry about it. We got water. And we need to take the time to bless, to ask the Lord, to thank the Lord for the blessings that he gives us. So in other words, Brad, you help me to just stop for a moment and say, you know what? Thank you, Lord, for that. And then I start thinking, well, thank you, Lord, for Brad. Thank you, Lord, for Brad, because he's a good friend. And then I start thinking, you know what, Lord, thank you for Northside Community Church because they love Brad. They opened their arms and they say, come on in, Brad. And you guys loved on Brad. Now he's playing the drums for us, you know, and God is good. And so that's what I'm saying. We need to stop and thank God for the things that he gives us in our lives, because sometimes we just get so busy that we just walk by stuff. So this morning, our main theme is the heart of giving. And our scripture for this morning is in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. We'll also be reading from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it'll be on the back of your weekender. There's an outline there you can follow along. But before we do anything else, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us. You know, I look at that photo and I think about all the stuff that you have done. And we open up our hearts and our minds as we discuss the heart of giving. Help us to understand the significance and the blessings that come with it. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to dive into this issue that isn't always the most comfortable to talk about. And to be really honest with you, this is the very time I've really, as a pastor, had to preach about this. And it's about money. Yes, I said it in church, money, okay? And we're going to talk about the heart of giving. And if you're wondering why we're discussing this, it's because, seriously, it's a very important part of our faith and our relationship with God. It is really an important part. And, you know, as I was thinking, as Americans, we really know how to spend money, don't we? Seriously, I mean, you look at the other countries, as Americans, we really know how to spend money. So I did some research. And I did some research on Black Friday and on Cyber Monday of, Monday of uh, 2023. And are you guys familiar with the Adobe um, software company? They put out the statistics every year of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And the Adobe analysis, it, it reported a record of $9.8 billion sold on Black Friday. And online sales, they were up from 2022. So what that tells us is that in spite of inflation, we showed up and we spent even more money this year. And on Cyber Monday, consumers, they spent $12.4 billion, also an increase from 2022. Now, the Saturday and Sunday that were in between those two days, what is known as the brick and mortar stores, they sold over $10 billion in Christmas sales. Merry Christmas, right? A total of $32.2 billion on one weekend. On one weekend. It just makes me think about the companies like Walmart and, and Best Buy, See, they're going to try to bring people like me and you in and into, bring, into buying the big ticket items that they will have, like smart TVs and um, 
the latest PlayStation or Xbox, by marking them down, and also by giving away free items like surround sound or, or other items that they may give away. Now, the companies that are doing this, these sales, they're doing it for a very specific reason. They're doing it for a very specific reason, and that's to take our money. That's why they're doing it. Now, it just seems incredible to me that these companies, they can do this. Now, you know what they're doing, right? You guys know what they're doing? See, they're telling you that they have something for you, something that you need. And here's the thing. They're going to allow you to have it if you just let go of your hard-earned money. You can have it. Can I tell you something you probably already know, but you may not have thought about it yet. See, the CEOs of Best Buy and Walmart and Target and all of these others who are going to put on their best sales on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, they don't really care about your feelings. They don't care about your feelings. They don't even really care about you. And I'm sorry to say that because some of you guys, you might have your favorite store. And, and if you're feeling sad right now, it's just truth, you know. Uh, and, and I'm sure that there are probably some nice men and women to the CEOs. But here's the thing. I don't know them. I don't know who they are. So the, the, the thing is, trust is what they're trying to advertise. Trust us. And, and here's the deal. These big sales on these hot items, they're, they're only after one thing, your money. And yet, here's the thing. I have never heard anybody say, I'm never going back there again because all they want is my money. I, I've never heard anybody say that. However, when I talk about money in the church, sometimes people, they're going to criticize the church. And they say, well, I'm never going to go back to that church because all they talk about is money. All they want is my money. And how is it that people have this worse opinion about the church than they do of companies that will be digging deep into their pockets. That just it, it just, it just bothers me. Now, these huge companies, they're going to tell you that you need a lot of things, but you really don't need all the things they're trying to sell you. See, they try hard to get your money, and yet somehow the church has gotten a, a, a reputation for being the bad guy. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. But we need to understand that the benefits of being a good steward of our treasure, no matter how great or how small your treasure is, we still need to be good stewards of it. You see, tithing is not just about giving the money. Tithing is not just about giving money. It's about trust and faith. It really is about acknowledging God and that he is the provider of all that we have. We have to come to that point in our life where we realize everything that we have, God has provided it. Amen. Now, the, the late Billy Graham, he once said, we are the custodians of what God has given us. This is a responsibility that we dare not take lightly. So I'm just going to say this. Buckle up, buttercup, because here's the thing. We're going to discuss this. The importance of tithing and God's blessing of tithing and the challenging of what it means to tithe. We're going to talk about that. So it brings us to our first point for the morning. The importance of tithing. What is the importance of tithing? Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. So turn with me in your Bible now. Let's take a look at what it says in Malachi. It, it reads... Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how are we robbing you in tithes and in offerings? A tithe, now, what is a tithe? A tithe is a portion. It's 10% of your income that you give to your local church. And the word tithe, it literally means a tenth in the Hebrew language. So for every dollar that you get, a dime goes to God. So God gets his dime for every dollar. Because the custom of tithing, honestly, people, is biblical. 
The custom of tithing is biblical, and many Christians and Jews, they partake in, in this part of their faith, and they practice it. And in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, listen to what it says. The tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belong to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. You know, I think about this. Does God really need our money? Does God need our money? I, I, you know, he's, he's not up there saying, you know what? I was going to do that miracle, but I kind of ran out of some money. You know, I don't think God, I don't think that's our God, right? He doesn't need our money. And, and you know, we read in Revelation 21, 21. This will blow your mind. Now, I have this issue that I kind of look at things in the abstracts. You know, so when I read Revelation 21, 21, and it talks about the observation of this, of what heaven looks like and the streets are made of gold. Instantly, I thought, wait a minute, this is God's economy, right? So what you're saying to me is that gold in heaven is the equivalent of asphalt. See, because they line their streets with it. See, that's God's economy. You know, he lines the streets of heaven with an asphalt that he calls gold. He doesn't need our money. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits, and all of your crops. See, the importance of tithing is not just the mere act of giving, but it is a spiritual discipline that reflects our faith. Our discipline is going to reflect our faith and trust and commitment to God. Tithing is where, uh, tithing is a way of acknowledging that everything that we have, it comes from God. Everything. Thank you, God, for that wonderful picture of all that grass out there with Brad. It is a way of saying, God, I see you as a source of all the blessings. And I am returning to you just a portion of what you have given to me. So I'm giving back to you, God. If you think about it, this tithing thing, it really is an act of worship. Just like we were worshiping right now to the Lord. We were exalting his name and singing to him and honoring him. That's what tithing is. It's an act of worship. And when we tithe, we are essentially offering a part of ourselves to God. It is a physical manifestation of a spiritual commitment to him. That's what we're doing. It's a way of saying, God, I'm willing to put you, you first in my life, God. I'm willing to do that. See, this is an act of worship, not just about the amount that we give. It is about the attitude in the heart in which we give. That's what it's about. See, it's about giving cheerfully and not out of a compulsion or not out of guilt. Tithing, it is participating in God's work on earth. You ever think of that? It's, that's a really cool thought because Tithing is participating in, the, in God's work on earth. Now, the funds that you give through tithing, they are used to support the church and all of its ministries. See, this includes supporting the pastoral staff, the, the maintenance of the church, uh, all of our utilities that have to be paid, and funding the various outreach programs that help us spread the gospel to the surrounding community around us. See, when we tithe, we're not just giving money. We're investing in God's holy kingdom. That's what we're doing. Now, it's demonstrating our trust in God. When we tithe, we are saying, God, I trust you. I trust you absolutely to, pro pro to provide for my needs. You're going to take care of my needs. I trust you, Lord. See, this is a powerful statement of faith, especially in a world where Financial security is often the major concern. And tithing is a way of declaring that our trust in God. And we don't just trust in our wealth and all of the possessions that we have acquired. Now, cultivating a generous spirit. Now, I don't think we could do that on our own. I think we really have to come to the Lord to be able to have that. See, the act of giving, it helps us to become less attached to our material possessions. 
and more focused on the things of God. I know it sounds interesting, but it's the truth. It's just like a muscle. The, the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. And it helps us to develop a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity. Let, let me explain what I mean. When I say a mindset of abundance, that's when God pours out his blessings to us. And he pours it out on our table of blessings. And we say, thank you, Lord. And it's abundant. And here's the thing. We see it. And God continues to pour on our table of blessings so much so that as we start giving our dime over to God, we start getting more and more and it's falling off the table. And we're like, here, God, here's some more. And, and not only do we tithe, but we start giving on top of that because of the blessings, the abundancy that we have a mindset that that's what God's doing for us. But there is a mindset of scarcity. And the mindset of scarcity is like this. You know, God, I got this new car. And the thing is, I got a big payment. And I'm seriously thinking about going to the Caribbean. You know, I really want to go on vacation, God. But you see, here's the problem. The problem is oftentimes our eyes are bigger than our checkbook. And what happens is we find ourselves in debt. And then we tell God, you know what? I can't even afford to tithe right now. I can't even afford to tithe right now, God. See, that's a mindset of scarcity. I, I only got what I got and I can't give it anymore, Lord. Instead of having this abundant understanding of who the Lord is and how it is that he provides for us. So a mindset of abundance, it reminds us that we are blessed people. We are seriously blessed people. And also, it gives us the opportunity to become people who bless other people. People that bless other people. Aligning our priorities with God's priority. That's the ticket. Aligning our priorities with God's priorities. See, when we give our first fruits to God, we are saying that he is top priority in our life. God and God alone. And we are saying that we value his kingdom more than our own comfort and our own desires. That's a hard place to come to. But that's where God wants us to live. This act of prioritizing God, it helps us to live in alignment with his will and his very unique purpose for each and every one of us. We can align ourselves with him and have the fruit of that. So expressing our gratitude to God. It's a, it's a way of saying, thank you, God, for all of the blessings that you have given me. Thank you. And when I look across this room, there's so many blessings in this room, we couldn't even put it in here with us. See, this act of gratitude, it helps us to keep a proper perspective of our wealth and our possessions. See, it reminds us that we are stewards of God's resources. And, and the thing is, we're not the owners of it. God is. Our second point for the morning, God's blessing for tithing. God's blessing for tithing is about a spiritual and emotional blessings that come from obeying God's command to tithe. It's about deepening our relationship with God. See, as your pastor, why am I talking about tithing? Because honestly, I want you to deepen your relationship with God. And then when we tithe, we're showing God that we trust him with our finances. We're showing God that we trust him, that we believe that he will provide for our needs no matter what. He will provide. Now, I get it. We have resources. We have resources like a home, like a car, a 401k. But don't forget that God he is the source of all of our resources. God is the source of all of our resources. So this act of faith, it strengthens our bond with him. This is how we strengthen our bond with God. And in return, he blesses us with his presence, with his peace, and with his guidance in our life. Tithing gives us the opportunity to participate in God's work. It gives us that opportunity. See, when we give our tithes, we're not just giving money. See, we're contributing to the church's mission to spread the gospel. See, to help those in need and to make a difference 
within our community that's around us. See, when you, give me a moment here. When you go to a restaurant and you finish your meals, do you run down to the street to a different restaurant and then pay the bill there? No, you don't do that. See, the same is true with the church. See, if you're being fed at a local church, then you need to give your tithe where you're being spiritually fed. And that's how it rolls. So this, this uh, participation that we have when, when we give to God, it brings a sense of fulfillment and purpose, knowing that we are part of something that is much bigger than ourselves. Tithing, it brings about material blessings. And we have to be careful about that. See, while it's important that we, that it's important to, to note that we shouldn't just give with the expectation of receiving something. The Bible, it does promise that God, he will bless those who give generously. The Bible tells us that. But in Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, listen what it says. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. See, this is a promise of God's provision and his abundance for those who honor him with their wealth. See, in the words of C.S. Lewis, and I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's, he's quite a theologian. And C.S. Lewis, he, he said, I do not believe that one can settle how much they ought to give. I am afraid that the only safe rule is to give more than you can spare. See, he's pretty hardcore about that. But this quote from C.S. Lewis, it encapsulates the essence of tithing. It's not about the amount that you give, but it's about the heart in which you're giving. See, it's about giving generously, sacrificially and joyfully. Test, now, here's the thing. Trusting that God will bless you in return. God will bless you in return. But most importantly, this reminds us of the greatest blessing of all. And that is the love and the grace that God gives us every single day, every moment of the day for all eternity. Our third point for the morning, the challenge of tithing. There's a challenge to it. Tithing can indeed be a challenge. Now, it's a test of our faith and our trust and how it is that we trust for God's provision for us. It's easy to give when we have plenty. When we're cashed up and everything's going good, it's easy to give. But what about when times get tough? What about when we're not sure how we're going to pay the bills or when we're facing a financial crisis? See, that's when tithing becomes a real challenge for us. Now, I told you a couple of weeks ago, I'm a dodo. I'm a dad of daughters only. And so most of my stories are going to be about me and my daughters and my wife, but one day when I was working in my garage at our house, we had a huge uh, fruitless mulberry tree in our front yard, uh, actually almost on the property line. And all the kids in the neighborhood, seriously, they would all come over and climb that tree. All my daughters would go up there and they'd climb. They'd look like a bunch of monkeys in the tree. But they'd all climb that tree. And uh, the thing is, every time my daughter Kim would climb that tree, and they'd be up there playing. I get a knock on my door. Ed, Kim's stuck in the tree and she can't get down. I don't know why. My daughter Kim, she could climb a tree like that. But coming down, forget about it. You know? So I can't tell you how many times, honestly, and Carly's laughing because she remembers this. How many times I had to go get my daughter Kim out of the tree? And this one time, it's just me and Kim. And I'm working in the garage. And she's playing around, watching me. And all of a sudden, she disappears. And I know she's going to the tree. So she climbs a tree and she's up in the tree and I'm working away. And all of a sudden I hear, Dad, help. I'm stuck in the tree. Dad, I'm in the tree. Help me. So I'm like, you know what, little girl? Today's the day you learn to climb down out of the tree. But then I said, no, I got to go help her. So I go over there and, and I get over there. And this is the God's truth. I say, Kimmy, I'm not going to climb the tree and come get you. You're going to have to come down. So I coax her halfway down the tree. And she gets on this big branch and she's sitting looking at me and she says, I'm stuck, Dad. I can't get out. 
And I put my arms up and it was too short. And I said, you know what, Kimmy? You're just going to have to trust me in this moment. Come on now, girl. Just I'm your dad. I'm big enough. I'm strong enough. I can catch you. Just just lean forward. And I got you. And I had to sit there and talk her and talk to her and talk to her. Finally, she leans forward and I catch her and I put her on the ground. And, you know, that was a real tender moment. She hugged my leg and everything. But as I was putting this sermon together, I thought about it and I thought, you know what? That's exactly how we are when we say, you know what, God, I can't tithe. I can't give right now. And God sticks his hands out and he goes, I know where you're at. He goes, you're on a limb, right? You're out on a limb financially. He says, but you know what? I got you. I got you. Just I'm strong enough. I'm bigger than this issue. Just lean forward. I got you. I'm your dad. Let me catch you. This is where God is in our life. And some of you guys might be out on that limb right now. You know, and, and God is in the mix of all that we have to deal with. And he is faithful. Amen. This is more than a financial aspect, people. It is about our attitude towards it. Are we reluctant givers or do we get out, give out of obligation? Are we giving cheerfully and willfully as the Bible instructs us? Listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's how he wants us to be able to give. Now, the attitude with which we give is just as important as the act of giving itself. Understanding that it is not a transaction. God is not an ATM. See, we're not giving to God in order to get something in return. That's not why we're given to God. Yes, the Bible does promise that blessings come to those who tithe, but that's not the primary reason and why it is that we give to God. We tithe out of obedience to God and out of, a uh, out of a gratitude that comes from deep within our heart for all that he has given us. Are we trusting God with our finances? Are we trusting God? It's about believing that he will provide for us. It really is. Even when we can't see how he's going to do it. He is our father and he's saying, I got you. I got you. It's about letting go of our need to control our own finances and finding God's promises within our life. Prioritizing God in our lives when we tithe. Uh, when we do that, what we're saying is that God is more important than our own material possessions. Putting God first. See, we're saying that we trust him more than we trust our own ability. This can be a hard and difficult mindset. I get that. It can be difficult, especially in a society that often values uh, material things more than anything else. See, the world wants to influence us. But God has a whole different way that he wants us to do our finances. And that's his way. See, it's, it's not overwhelming. Let me just say this. I know it seems like it, but it's not overwhelming with faith, with prayer, and with a heart that will obey God. See, we can overcome these challenges and experience the blessings that come with tithing because there's a blessing there. And I hope that you've gained a new perspective on how it is and what it is tithing is about. So remember, it's not just about the money. It's about trust and faith and acknowledging God as the complete and entire provider of all that you have. It's about being a good steward of what he's given us. So let's challenge ourselves this week. Let's take, just, just take a step of faith and trust God with our tithes and our offerings. You know, the thing here is consistency. You know, make your yes is yes and your no is no. No, I'm not going to do it, God. Yes, I am. Consistent. Because when we're consistent as a church family, then as a church, we have the ability to have a baseline of giving that we can actually make a, a budget with. 
in that budget, it helps us to do the ministry that the Lord would have us. Now, we don't just give God a tip. We give God the whole tithe. That's what we do. So let's see the blessings that come when we put God first in our life and in our finances. Let's see how the Lord is going to bless us. Let us pray. Now, I'm going to ask the uh, ushers to come uh, in my closing prayer here because we're, we're going to do an offering. And now you're saying, wait a minute, Ed, you're doing a collection right after you preach about tithing? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Because we do have the Lord's Supper coming. So I'm going to ask the uh, ushers to come forward. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we just want to thank you for today. As you know, we just ask that you would help us to apply tithing and, and your word and your instructions to our lives. Give us the courage to trust you in our finances. See, we know that when we honor you with our tithes and our offerings, that you will open up the windows of heaven and you'll pour out blessings. But we're not just doing it for that, Father. We're doing it because it is required. So hear our prayer. And Lord, as we've gathered right now, I've asked the ushers to come forward. And this is a time, Lord, where we're going to take and we're going to give back to you. So I just want to thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given our church, for the direction that you've given our church, and for the people, Lord, our forever family here, how we support one another, how we do life together. You know what, Lord? This really is glorious, and we thank you for all that we receive. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.